Stuka Joe here, and today we'll be doing something uh, experimental. We're going to play the Russian campaign, and I'm going to use a way of uh, showing the playthrough in a more condensed way. You will not be seeing my hands, and you will see movement uh, and combat occurring in different sectors of the map, and you can will be able to see the movement of all the units in that specific sector, followed by the uh, attacks combat results and combat effects in that specific sector before moving to the next but the idea is that uh, instead of uh, me explaining the results of one battle you'll see four or five battles resolving at the same time and you'll be able to uh, judge what the result of the battle was uh, through the use of these uh, markers and here we have for example uh, the markers for the combat results that are uh, uh, relevant to the Russian campaign. Attacker retreats, contact, defender loses one unit, attack, attacker loses one unit, defender and attacker elimination, and you have the infamous defender surrenders uh, result. And then you'll have the combat odds, which we will place uh, on top of the attacked unit, so you will know what odds that unit is facing. So you will see in one take the odds, and then in the other, the combat results, and then the effects of the combat results. If units were eliminated, they will uh, disappear. And if units retreat, they will retreat. And you will see some little red arrow arrows showing the retreat path. So we have already set up the uh, Russians. So now let's set up the Axis forces. So now here we have the Axis forces. We're looking at the forces in Romania. And in the first impulse of the game, each turn is divided by two impulses. The first impulse of the game, the Russians do not have uh, the uh, doubling effect of being behind rivers. And that is in order to uh, recreate the German surprise attack that was uh, Barbarossa on the 22nd of June. So uh, they will not be doubled, the Russians, behind rivers. And here we have the forces of Army Group South, which are, according to the rules, they have to attack the Russian forces in the Kiev military district, which are these forces here. And uh, Army Group South's forces are these ones here, and they have a headquarters which means that they have the use of a Stuka, which uh, increases the odds of one particular attack by three. So a one-to-one -one attack becomes a four-to-one attack. And now we're looking at the uh, forces of Army Group Center here around uh, Warsaw. And they have to attack the forces here in the uh, Western Military District, which encompasses this area here. And finally, we have Army Group North, which is concentrated around Konigsberg, and they have to attack the forces of the Baltic military district. And that is all, uh, these are all restrictions in the first impulse of the game. And near Leningrad, here we have the Finnish forces that begin near the border, and they're facing two Russian armies. As I stated before, this is a double impulse game. In each turn, the Germans, for example, move in the first impulse. And if it's a clear weather turn, the units can move their full movement allowance. Then uh, the Germans resolve their combats, and then they move a second time during the second impulse. And depending on the type of unit, for example, German panzer units can move up to four hexes in the second impulse. German infantry can move up to two hexes. And for example, Axis, uh, let's say Romanian infantry, cannot move at all during the second impulse. Now, that is in clear weather. In light mud turns, in the first impulse, all units can move up to four hexes. In mud turns, up to two hexes. And we have here the movement rates for light and mud weather. In snow, all units can move half their movement allowance fractions rounded up. And uh, some units can move only one hex in their second impulse. Meanwhile, the slower units cannot move at all. So we begin with the May-June turn. And the first impulse would be May 1941. And we start with the Axis. 
and in this turn the weather is clear so there will be no weather effect and we will start uh, moving uh, the units in Army Group North and here we see the movement for Army Group North units and we'll see attacks on these two units now let's take a look at uh, the movement for the units of Army Group Center and we see that Army Group Center will concentrate in attempting to destroy these three units here now let's take a look at the movement for the units in Army Group South and Army Group South will attempt to destroy the uh, Russian 6th and 12th armies in this first impulse now let's go south and take a look at the movements of the Axis units in Romania. And in Romania we will see attacks against the 4th Cavalry Corps and the uh, 12th uh, Tank Corps. Meanwhile in the Finnish front, uh, Finns stay put and will not attack the Russians in this turn. Now to the combats caused by units of Army Group North and we will show you the odds and the units being attacked there is a four to one and a three to one attack and army group north will use its stuka to increase the three to one attack to six to one now let's take a look at the attacks that uh, are caused by army group center and we see two seven to one attacks here and uh, a three to one and a four to one attack army group center uses its stuka to increase a seven to one attack to ten to one and that is an automatic elimination and as a result of that the uh, russian fourth army surrenders and it is permanently eliminated from the game and in this game when a unit surrenders it does not return to the game there is a mechanism to return eliminated units through replacement points for the Russians but this particular unit will not come back and we invert the units that participated in the elimination attack they will not be able to move during the second impulse now we move to take a look at the attacks by Army Group South. Only two attacks, a two to one and a five to one attack, so Army Group South will commit its Stuka to increase the two to one attack to five to one. And now we take a look at the attacks of the units in Romania. And we have two three to one attacks. There will be no Stuka support for Axis attacks in Romania. So we have a total of nine battles still to be resolved. And we will start from north to south with the battles uh, of Army Group North. So we have a defender retreat and an exchange. And exchange results are those that the Germans have to avoid because they receive replacements once every year so in that exchange the Russians lose the 11th army and the Germans lose one unit the 10th uh, infantry corps we place Soviet eliminated units in the replacement pool box and we do the same for German units that are eliminated now we solve the battles for army group center and the results are a defender eliminated a defender retreat and another exchange And here are the losses in those three battles, and the Germans lose another infantry corps. And now we proceed to resolve the battles of Army Group South, two five to one attacks. And in this case, both defending Russian armies are eliminated. Now to the battles with the units in Romania. Here uh, there is an exchange and 
the other attack near Odessa, uh, the defenders are eliminated. In Army Group South's attacks, as well as uh, the Axis Forces attacks in Romania, the uh, Russians lose two armies and a cavalry corps, while the uh, Axis lose a Romanian infantry corps. And this is the situation at the end of the May 1941 Axis impulse. And now we proceed to the June 1941 impulse. And now Axis units can move, although at a reduced rate. We'll first take a look at the movement of uh, units from Army Group North. And now let's see the movement of the units of Army Group Center. And here we see the uh, two of the uh, Panzer Corps of Army Group Center trying to open a wider gap in the middle of the line. And now let's take a look at the uh, movements for the units comprising Army Group South. Here these two stacks totaling 30 combat factors are more than enough for a greater than 10 to 1 result and that is an automatic victory which means that the uh, Soviet uh, tank corps surrenders and is permanently removed from the game and the uh, attacking units are flipped and that was an automatic victory and that takes place in the movement phase and we flip those units to make sure that they don't participate in any attacks during the upcoming combat phase. And now let's see the movement, second impulse movement of the uh, Axis units that started in Romania. Not much movement but the uh, German 30th Infantry Corps crosses the uh, river and approaches the Dniester River. And that is the end of the movement phase of the June uh, impulse, the second impulse of the first turn. Let's take a look now at the combat situations that were generated. And we see that there are seven attacks to be resolved. Let's take a look at the battles occurring around Riga and Kaunas here. We have four battles two four to one attacks and a f two five to one attacks. In two of the battles the defenders were eliminated and the Russians lose two tank corps. In Kaunas the defending cavalry unit is forced to retreat but is surrounded by enemy zones of control and is also eliminated. And finally in the remaining battle there is an exchange result the Russian 8th Army is eliminated and the Germans lose one of their better infantry corps, the 43rd. And now let's take a look at the battles occurring near Brest. A 7 to 1 and a 3 to 1 attack. In the 7 to 1 attack the defending tank corps is forced to retreat and retreats to the Pripyat marshes. Meanwhile, the remaining uh, defending Russian army, the third army, is eliminated in an exchange. And the Germans lose the 12th Infantry Corps. And now to the last battle, near Luo, a 6 to 1 attack. This attack, the defending Russian tank corps is eliminated. And that's the end of all battles for the June 1941 German impulse. Now we flip back the inverted units. And that's the end of the German first turn. Here we have the losses for the second impulse. We saw that the Russians lost six units. The Germans, two infantry corps, including a 5-4. And here we see the losses in terms of units eliminated on the Soviet side, 13 units. But these units can be brought back to the game via the replacement mechanism. 
The Russians also lost these two units, which surrendered and are permanently eliminated. German losses so far are four German infantry corps and one Romanian infantry corps. And now we proceed to the May-June Soviet turn. First, the May impulse. As we begin the Russian turn, we see that in the south, there is a gap here. Uh, the Germans uh, have an unobstructed path over the Dniester River. Uh, worse yet, there's a big gap here to the north of Lowe. Luckily for the Russians, this is marsh terrain, and the Germans will not be able to advance further than uh, one hex per impulse in marsh terrain. But the most pressing situation for the Soviets is to uh, plug the line here. There is uh, an enormous gap before the Dvina River here. And Riga, obviously, is in uh, danger of being captured very soon. So the Soviets, this turn, uh, receive replacements at the beginning of the turn. Uh, and replacements are... Uh, in numbers of strength points equal to the value of the worker units that the Soviets, Soviets presently have. Shown here, for example, are the worker units in Kharkov and Stalino, and uh, those have a strength of two. And at the beginning of the game, the Soviets have a strength of 11 worker points distributed through various of the principal cities in the Soviet Union. So we select uh, eliminated units totaling 11 combat factors. And we select the units to be replaced from the units in the eliminated pool. And we select four units, one cavalry and three tank corps. And replacement units can be placed on the eastern edge of the map or on any city that has a worker unit, maximum of uh, one unit per city, we will place the uh, cavalry corps, the reconstituted uh, six cavalry corps in Kiev, which has a worker unit. One tank corps goes to Kharkov. Another tank corps starts at Stalino. And the last tank corps starts at Leningrad. Now we have the Russian movement phase of their first impulse. And as you can see, the main uh, problem for the Russians is to plug this huge gap here. And uh, the only way of rapidly moving units in this game is through rail movement. And the Russians have a rail movement capacity of five units per turn, irrespective of weather. And the Russians have several uh, units, armies, that are currently on uh, city spaces that have uh, railways going through them. We have here an army at Kalining, and that army will make uh, avail itself of rail movement. And using rail movement, it will follow this route and will end its movement in this hex. And that is the first Russian unit moved by rail. We have four more that can be moved in the same way. Next will be the Russian 21st Army here in Tula. It will use rail movement to move in this direction through Minsk and end its movement in this wood hex. The Russian 19th Army starts here in Moscow and it will use rail movement to move here uh, just to the uh, west of Riga. Now near Riga we will see movement now by the two Russian uh, tank corps that are nearby. And both uh, tank units are used to form a line with the newly arrived uh, units by rail. 
the Soviets can still move two units by rail. The 9th uh, Tank Corps here in Leningrad will use rail movement to take up a position behind the Russian uh, line that was recently formed. Now let's look at the situation further to the south and uh, the Soviets still have one unit that they can move by rail. Here's the situation around Lov before Russian movement. And here we see after movement and there's still one unit that can be moved by rail. So the Russians will move the 18th uh, Army that is stationed at Kiev by rail to take a position here behind the river Dniester. And now we'll see the movement of the remaining Russian units. That's the end of the Russian movement for the first impulse. Now we remove the uh, rail markers. And here is the situation after the first impulse. Now the Russians conduct a second impulse in which uh, some of their units can move up to two hexes. And those are the lighter colored units, like the tank corps and uh, the infantry armies that the Russians have at this stage cannot move during the second impulse, as well as none of the cavalry corps. So in the southern area of the front, the only units that can actually move are these tank corps and this other tank corps. So let's see now the movement, second impulse movement in the southern sectors. Now we move to the northern uh, part of the front and we'll see the uh, movement by the uh, tank corps that are there. There are actually four of them, five with this one that could actually move. Only two of the five tank corps will move. And that's the end of Russian movement. There are no uh, attacks. And that ends the first Russian turn. Now we move on to the July-August 1941 turn, and there's a circled one, meaning that the Germans receive reinforcements. And here we see that during the July impulse, the Axis will receive three German units, including the SS Reserve. And uh, the positive thing about this unit, or the thing that makes it unique, is that it doesn't count for stacking purposes. There's also a Hungarian Motorized Infantry Corps that will arrive. In the second impulse, in the August impulse, the Axis will receive a German Infantry Corps as well as a Romanian Infantry Corps. The Hungarian 1st Motorized Infantry Corps starts here in this uh, railway hex uh, in Hungary, and the German reinforcements start on any west edge hex. We have the 40th Panzer Corps starting in Berlin, and the uh, Infantry Corps and the SS Reserve uh, to the hex that is west of Breslau. Now we go to the Axis movement phase, and during uh, non-winter turns, the Germans or the Axis can move six units uh, by rail. We first begin by, by moving four German infantry corps to set up an attack against the 10th uh, tank corps. And in addition, the bottom unit in this stack which we now place on top is the 56th Panzer Corps, which will join that battle. Now the Germans have 21 combat factors against the Russians' three combat factors. The Germans now commit Army Group North's Stuka unit, which increases the odds now to 10 to 1, and that is an automatic victory. The Russian tank corps is permanently removed from the game as it surrenders. And the attacking German units are flipped. Uh, they cannot move for the rest of this turn. Now the German 41st Panzer Corps will move here to attack 
the Russian 7th Tank Corps. And now three German infantry corps will move to join in the attack by moving into this hex and also into the hex with the Panzer Corps. And the 38th Infantry Corps covers the attacking unit's left flank. Now let's take a look at the movement of the units that comprise Army Group Center. Army Group Center's 24th and 46th Panzer Corps will move in this direction here to set up an attack on the Russian uh, 9th Tank Corps. The Germans still have three Panzer Corps here near Warsaw. Before moving the uh, Panzers, let's take a look at the movement by the infantry. And now the three Panzer Corps move. The 39th moves here. The 47th moves to this hex. And the 57th joins the Italian and Germans attacking the uh, Russian armor in the woods. The two German corps in Brest take a position behind the Niemann River. And now the uh, newly arrived infantry corps, which is the 27th here, will use rail movement to reach Brest. Now let's take a look at the movement for the units of Army Group South. The first unit to move will be the uh, 49th Mountain Corps and because it is a mountain unit it does not stop at any mountain hex and moves through mountainous terrain to a position here. Meanwhile, the newly arrived Hungarian 1st Corps moves and stops here in this mountain hex. Army Group South has uh, divided its armored forces and there is an armored or panzer corps in each one of these hexes together with infantry. This group moves to this swamp hex and it will attack the uh, 5th Russian Cavalry Corps. The group with the 3rd Panzer Corps moves here and surrounds the Russian 5th Army. Finally, the last group, the one with the 14th Panzer Corps, occupies Luo and will be attacking the Russian 11th Tank Corps. And now let's take a look at the uh, movement of the Axis units that started in Romania. The Axis units here are not strong enough to go on to the offensive. However, the German 30th Infantry Corps moves in a northerly direction to take a position here, effectively cutting the uh, Russian 11th uh, Tank Corps' path of retreat. Now the two reinforcements, the 40th Panzer Corps and the SS Reserve, will use rail movement to deploy here at Kaunas. Now we remove the uh, uh, train markers. And meanwhile, in Finland, the Finns stay put where they are here, and there will be no movement nor combat initiated there.